interference. Minister, over the last three years, we've had a lot of austerity coming from this government, which has made life harder for struggling people on low and middle incomes. Some of the lowest paid and most vulnerable people in our society are tenants of local authorities. This is because of the very narrow parameters someone has to fit through in order to be able to apply for social housing, and even more narrow parameters required for them to actually ever be housed. Most people who fit into that first parameter are almost always going to end up in private accommodation, receiving rent supplement, which costs the state nearly $350 million annually. Recent rent increases in the private sector have pushed rent supplement to the limit and done massive harm to many families. Far too many people have been made homeless due to these rent increases. So many that we have record numbers in need of emergency accommodation. This kind of accommodation is busting at the seams due to the failure of the government to protect tenants from rent increases by implementing rent controls. But in the case of local authority homes, rent is controlled, and it is much more likely that a tenant will lose their home. Uh, will, will lose. This is welcome, but in doing this, government needs to strike the balance where rent is fair and yet affordable. This balance has been struck in many ways, but we are dealing with people who live on extremely tight budgets, and they have been the victims of a lot of cuts over the last three years. The cut to the young person's dole was particularly hard. Increases in utility costs and cuts to household benefits and all the other supplementary payments took its toll on people living in council housing. The impending water charges loom large in the minds of these people. They will not pay simply because they cannot pay. Next summer, a new rent scheme will come into place which will set base levels and thresholds for rent as well as proposed bans. These could potentially not change much, but some projections are that they could increase rents for some people who really cannot afford to pay anything more. That may be an indictment of our economy and many other things, but it is a reality that must be considered when setting the basics for how local authority rent is charged. Minister, I also want to ask you about voluntary housing bodies and their rent levels. We recently saw the obscene situation where a property which the state helped to develop was left idle because a Catholic housing association in Dublin was refusing to accept rents in line with the reality of what people paid. Instead, they wanted market prices. Of course, most approved housing bodies charge a fair level of rent and give good service and are always eager to have their homes occupied. But a lesson must be learned from that. Common sense eventually did prevail. Councils and approved bodies must remain places where people can rent at a fair and affordable price. Will the minister commit to not change the rent scheme in any way, which would result in higher rents? Senior citizens and people like that who pay a certain rent are, you know, would, 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 could be affected if this, is, if this is implemented. And I've had a look at some of the levels, and I would be extremely worried that this would be much more disadvantageous to people, um, this new rent scheme that you're planning to bring in. So, Minister, um, I, I'm just asking you to look very carefully at this uh, scheme, and I know we will be debating it thoroughly over the next while um, in, the new, in 2015. But um, I just think we need to look at it very, very carefully. I'm worried about the bans that are being proposed. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Four minutes. Thank you for raising this <coughs> important issue. And um, in relation to the issue that you raised on the AHB, I know the one we're referring to. And as you're aware, discussions took place last night in order to solve that issue. And I'm happy that it's uh, certainly moving in the right direction. Having said that, I do share uh, some of your concerns and uh, attitude as regards uh, ensuring that common sense does prevail. I have to be frank about that. Um, consistency and fairness is at the heart of the new differential uh, rent framework. Responsibility for setting local authority rents has been devolved as an executive function to individual local authorities since 1986. Under the new scheme, this will be, uh, become a reserve function. While all housing authorities charge rents known as differential rents related to the income of tenant households, the amount of rent varies from local authority to local authority across the country. 
um, some to varying degrees. Uh, this has led to a situation whereby similar households in comparable accommodation are charged varying amounts of differential rent depending on where they live and which local authorities let in the accommodation. Uh, the rent regime in individual authorities also differs on issues like the types and amounts of income that are reckonable for differential rent purposes. Uh, there is no justification for this uh, disparate and inconsistent approach uh, to rent setting for accommodation that is funded wholly by the Exchequer. And there are many cases which would uh, cause you great concern, so it needs to be addressed. Section 31 of the Housing Miscellaneous Provisions Act 2009 facilitates a significant harmonisation in local authority rent levels, while retaining the principles of rents related to household income and leaving some discretion to individual authorities to determine rent policies in their areas. The new system, though, will be more equitable, transparent and consistent, with regulations providing for a base charge for each household member uh, uh, amounting to €30 Euros per week in the case of single-person households, uh, which is identical to the rent contribution payable by single persons in receipt of rent sim sup supplement, uh, incidentally, and €45 Euros per week for couples. Households with incomes in excess of thresholds uh, to be set in regulation and which will be related to household composition will also be required to pay a differential charge of a proportion of income above the threshold. Individual housing authorities are already empowered under the Housing Act to include charges in the rent relating to the costs of works and services provided to dwellings. Uh, the Government Social Housing Strategy 2020, published uh, a few weeks ago, indicated uh, that the necessary statutory instruments will be made in the first quarter of next year uh, to commence the process of introducing the new rents framework. The elected members of each local authority will then have a number of months to make the first rent scheme under the 2009 Act within the parameters laid down the regulations. A further commencement order will be made later in 2015, introducing rent charging under Section 31. On the introduction of Section 31 rents, housing authorities will have a two-year transitional period during which they will continue to set rents at their own discretion, thus affording them the opportunity to move in incremental steps towards the rent levels that will apply on expiry of the transitional period. Under an amendment of Section 31 of the Housing Miscellaneous Provisions Act 2014, the new rent framework will apply also to rent contributions payable by beneficiaries under the new scheme of housing assistance currently being piloted by seven housing authorities. In the new year, I will prescribe the rent contributions payable in respect of housing assistance during the two-year transitional period for the introduction of the new rent framework. two minutes. I agree with you that um, um, local authorities, some local authorities vary, and I think that needs to be sorted out um, because it has been a, an awful hindrance and certainly hasn't been very fair. So I, I'm totally in agreement with you on that. But I am worried that in some ways this may cost a bit more. Um, and I, I mentioned the, the senior citizens and the, you know, people who made financial contributions. Many of them made huge contributions and end up paying rent on top of that. And um, in some cases in the past, I've found people have passed away within a short period as well, and then are still paying their rents. And then I, it looks as though to me, um, they, they also often pay, on top of their rent, they pay for a boiler service and other things, you know. So I just think that um, uh, there's also been a situation where, where the differ, differential rents, which has been used by Dublin City Council, has, has put people, you know, put the, the prices up so high um, in occasions that if a person earns more money, they go so high, in some cases, two, three hundred euros. Now, that to me doesn't make sense. Some voluntary housing bodies have caps um, on the maximum rent that you pay. And I do think that we should be looking at that maximum and what, you know, where, it, where it should be, because it's, it's ridiculous. I had a local authority te tenancy, and I was paying 80 euros. When I became a TD, I'm paying nearly 300 euros. I just think it's, it's, it's wrong. We should be encouraging social housing, not trying to um, discourage people when it comes to social housing. But, and also in terms of, if you're, I know you're planning to bring in the, 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 the purchase, ten purchase scheme. But I think we should also include in that um, that this money should be ring-fenced for social housing and uh, uh, any proceeds that come in regards to that scheme should be ring-fenced 
because in the past it ends up in a pile and it doesn't go where it should go. So, Minister, um, I have reservations about this scheme. I, I do think we need to look much more carefully at some of the levels you've set, some of the bans you're talking about. I think the, um, you're setting them a bit lower and that will cause serious problems. Okay, good morning. Minister, you have said. Thank you, Deputy, um, for raising this issue. And I know you're uh, something you, you've um, you know, considered views on. I don't think we're a million miles away from one another, actually, to be fair. Um, I think we're kind of agreeing. Um, and I think the, the two year interim period is the period that we'll use to sort out maybe any issues that may arise. And that's why I wanted it for two years, uh, to ensure that any issues uh, that did arise. Look, we need something that's consistent. We need something that's fair. And we also need something that shows that uh, people are being treated uh, in the same bands the same way. Um, over the local authorities, if you analyse some of the rents that have been paid in various different local authorities, um, they, just, it's, they don't stack up side by side as regards being fair and equitable. Um, and the process by which we're doing this, we've outlined uh, the interim period for two years is something that I think will iron out any issues. I don't expect there to be many issues, uh, but I, I do feel that um, uh, that period of time will, can be used in order to do that. Um, this is something I also uh, want to point out that local authorities themselves in many ways have requested. And many local authority members. And yes, of course, there's going to be a change in rents as a result of this. I, I wouldn't feel that they're going to be significant. I may also add that in some cases, the rents are going to go down. Um, so there's going to be an equilibrium uh, there. Uh, but certainly from my time, and this predates my time in this role, um, I know that uh, many local authority members across all political hue and cry, and many local authority housing uh, representatives and uh, council officials and CEOs have requested that this be looked at. And I think the framework, uh, which is uh, leveraging on previous legislation brought in, dare I say it, even by previous administrations, I think is, is something that uh, uh, is welcome and should be done. I agree with you on the tenant purchase scheme. The tenant purchase scheme is something I'm initiating as part of this whole, uh, uh, the whole social housing strategy. And I, I, I wanted to because I think it's critically important that we give people an opportunity to purchase their own homes. But I also want to make sure it's fair and it's equitable and that it'll work. And uh, that's why a lot of energy is going to go in to make sure that that happens. And uh, I think it's, it's something that's necessary because people should aspire to be able to purchase their own homes. And um, uh, this is what the new scheme will do. And I hope that the scheme will operate in various different ways in order to facilitate people of different circumstances to be able to purchase their own home, which is obviously something that we all desire. Thank you. Thank you, Mr.